Hi, welcome back to Fafal Live. It's Thursday, August 27th. Thank you for joining. Uh, and if you're joining for the first time, I was uh, encouraged by a friend to introduce what the heck we're doing here uh, with this show. So I am going to do that briefly. Um, Fafal Live was created to make sure that the insights and ideas that you're getting around people analytics and the future of work are timely, relevant, and actionable. It's one thing to you know wait for a conference or event. You know every few months, um, there's value in that to bring everything together in a cohesive experience. Certainly, uh, but this is really meant to be an ongoing dialogue with the community about what's happening what you can potentially do about it, and just to prod some ideas and point you to uh, certain resources. Our framing uh, for our program is, is this. I spend the first uh, eight to 10 minutes or so going through the news of the week. Uh, then I go and address a question of the week. And finally, uh, the topic of the week. And this week, we're going to be talking about social justice and diversity, equity, and inclusion. And our guests today, uh, Stella Lupashore and Lexi Martin, um, who will uh, be on uh, after this initial 30 minutes, uh, will talk specifically around diversity uh, and inclusion. So I'm very excited to have them on the program today. Uh, I'm also going to talk about uh, PFAO and what we're doing around this People Data for Good movement, which, of course, uh, as you can imagine, is very much aligned with diversity, equity, and inclusion. And finally, we're going to talk about the risks of predictive analytics. I cannot uh, tell you how many times over the past several years I have heard people say, well, we want to get too predictive. We want to get too prescriptive. And I have to be totally honest. There's part of me that you know, cringes uh, when I hear that because it invites the question, why? And number two, does that individual or does that organization understand the risks inherent in predictive analytics? And that relates to the topic that I want to talk about uh, here in this initial segment. And that's really what's happening with social justice in the United States. Um, as you likely know, uh, there's been another um, black man murdered in, um, in on a video recording that the, the world is now seen in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And it is the case where uh, these people uh, who are perpetrating these uh, acts have a certain mindset that is informed by data. Um, that data is rooted in what they listen to, what they see, what they hear in the forms of stories um, from family members to people in their community. And this has been going on for generations. So we have, uh, from a certain perspective, a uh, a reasonable, in terms of how the brain works, um, explanation for why people are perpetuating prejudice uh, behaviors. And it then very quickly invites the question, how do we disrupt these behaviors? And we have to, in my view, go back to the data. And it's, it's not just me saying that because this is the world I live in, in terms of data analytics and AI. It's really how we get the insight, how does the insight inform the stories, and then people consume these stories. And I certainly appreciate the work of Steven Pinker and others who talk about stories as the building blocks of thought. And thought in turn drives behaviors. So if we think about what is informing those stories, and first thing that you might be thinking about is media. Okay, I, I, I get that. And media's goal is to drive eyeballs, to drive viewership. And that is certainly understandable. I'm not going to talk about the good, bad of that. Uh, but those stories um, that are promoted through media or at the dining room table, are we as rational human beings actually being discerning? in how we are consuming 
those stories and the underlying rationale, underlying insights, the underlying data. So in the final segment, I'm going to actually talk about where we are with the role of data and analytics and in forming insight and, and stories and in turn behavior, both at an individual level and an organizational level and at a societal level. Because here's the uh, the the true um, uh, challenge that we're all facing. Uh, if you're viewing this, you're probably viewing this from a professional standpoint and you're saying, okay, hey, I'm turn tuning into to learn what my organization can do and how I can develop my career. And here we are talking about social justice. Moving forward, particularly what's happening in the NBA being a, a a key example and kudos to those who have taken a stance in the National Basketball Association here in the United States. It has garnered the attention of, of people around the world uh, and rightly so. And who knows what's going to happen uh, in the days ahead, but certainly uh, people are turning in uh, to their televisions and expecting to watch a basketball game and they're understanding that that's not happening and they ask why it's happening and that is thus calling attention to the, the matter at hand. Uh, because here is uh, something that I, I get really hopeful uh, about, is that organizations that I have been working with over the last several months are truly uh, earnest in their uh, intention to help facilitate social justice in America. Um, hopefully around the world, but I know here in America, it, it has an elevated level of seriousness. I, I've seen uh, employee councils, um, advocacy groups um, developed within uh, organizations to actually talk about this and talk about what the organization can do. Uh, this has uh, tangents into how we develop people, how we select people, how we elevate people, how we communicate internally. After all, we spend the bulk of our lives, in most cases, working. And I was <laughs> going to work is one thing, but obviously we're in extraordinary situations right now, but working with others. And are we perpetuating the norms of the past uh, through our behaviors at work? Um, or are we actually taking this inflection point in our society to actually drive meaningful change in the workplace in addition to society and hopefully you know, in our homes? After all, and this is where I'll wrap up, we have to be conscious of why we think and believe the way we do. If we are conscious and we are truly, uh, I would say, compassionately critical, you know, not a shaming, oh, I can't believe I'm, I'm here and I think those thoughts. It's just, how did I get here? How did we get here? And if we can unwind that in a very compassionate, calm way, we can say, hey, some of the data that we have, some of the stories that we have, in fact, many of the data, many of the stories are not accurate. And they're certainly not accurate in 2020 and beyond. So with this discerning view, we're going to talk uh, to Lexi Martin at the bottom of the hour, then Stella at 10 a.m. Pacific uh, about diversity and inclusion. But when I come back, I'm going to talk about uh, PAFAO and what we're doing there and how we're going to advance the People Data for Good movement. So I'll talk to you in a couple minutes.